G'day, Enzo. Uh, welcome to Good Movie Monday. Thanks for joining us. G'day, gents. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you're most welcome. And look, the tunnel is celebrating its, what, 10th year anniversary? Like, where the hell did that time go? It, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it, and um, I want to. I want to really jump straight into the documentary, if I can, um, yeah, sure. and just start by asking, where did this sort of documentary? You know, how did it come about, and who broached the idea in the first place? Well, I think. Look, I think it's been something that's been kind of on the back of my mind for a couple of years now, just because I know that at the time. Um, we got so much behind the scenes footage, right? So uh, Jules, my producing partner and writing partner on the film um, and business partner at the time, um, had a, a pretty solid background in documentary filmmaking. So, and you can see it, it's hilarious in the in all the clips, like you just bug the crap out of everyone on the cast and crew at every opportune moment to get like stick a camera in their face and go, so tell me what's happening, how's it going and whatever. and most of the time it was welcome and it was a pretty fun set. I think that's one of the things that comes through in the, watching the docker back at the moment is just how much fun everybody had. But you can tell there were moments where people were like, yeah, don't, just don't bother me right now, you know? <laughs> so, so I knew we had this wealth of the material and combined with the fact that um, over the last 10 years, it's the thing that everyone always wants to talk to me about. And I'm always having very similar conversations and recounting a lot of similar stories. And I thought, you know, it'd be really great to find a way to harness all of that, put it all together. And I guess in some ways come up with a, a definitive story of how we did it, what went down on set, but also um, talk to all of the distribution stuff, which obviously we didn't really get a chance to talk about at the time because it was all buzz leading up to the release and everything that all the fallout after that and um, and whatnot never really got touched. So um, I knew I wanted to do it, but I knew I couldn't do it because I was way too close to it, which is when I started talking to Adrian and sort of went, you know, do we want to do a thing? Like this might this might be fun. And, you know, now we're here. Excellent. Well, I'm, I have no doubt that maybe some of my questions, uh, if they ever venture into sort of spoiler territory for the documentary, feel free to sort of decline to answer. But um, I wanted to talk about the the original release of the tunnel. Um, the original crowdfunding strategy was a bit of a stroke of genius and kind of unique at the time. And no doubt there's going to be some people that are listening or watching that um, don't know about that. Can you kind of just explain to our listeners sort of what you did to raise the cash for that film? Sure. I mean, it was a, a, a version of crowdfunding, I guess. And really what it breaks down to is we figured that, um, you know, at 25 frames per second, a 90 minute movie has 135,000 frames in it. And if we could sell off each frame for a dollar each, that we'd have 135 grand to go make a movie. That's That was basically the pitch, right? Um, but as part of, you know, having an audience and, and the internet kind of, fund our film um the other side of that was we felt like it, we wanted to give it back to the internet um as a thank you um not just to the people that funded it but to everybody um and so that yeah that's that's when it got kind of complicated <laughs> from a distribution point of view but i'm sure we'll get to that <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> um and generally i think there's a, a relatability um, to, to the better found footage films. You know, I definitely was one of those kids that explored stormwater drains and sort of tunnels and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if, you know, if this film had come along when I was a kid, it would have had that Jaws effect. There's no fucking way I would have gone into any of those. <laughs> did you and Carlos, the director, have... Um, did you draw any inspiration from your own experiences, you know, for telling this story? Actually, Jules was the, the big underground kind of, you know, explorer dude. Um, Carlo is very much a... Um, uh, an adventurer so he's very outdoorsy and stuff so those two things kind of I think combined there but for me it was more that the, the found footage thing has always appealed to me because I just I'm a sucker for that really kind of ambiguous unexplained creepy stuff like I, I will go down massive YouTube rabbit holes watching the weirdest crap right like it's just <laughs> um, you know ghosts caught on camera and all that sort of uh, crap and, and it's just I don't know, there's something about a really well-executed found footage type shot um, that just, I don't know, it just puts puts the makes the hair stand up on, on end, right? So 
from there, really, the story came out from Jules and I trying to work out uh, way before Carlo came on board just what we could do with the resources we had and what we had access to and our own skill set. How could we build something that we could go and make without, you know, have it like that we could fund on a credit card that is sort of sort of vibe. So, um, you know, the original ideas we started banding around were like set in the outback in like gold rush towns and shit. Like it's just, it's very different from what it became. Um, so, yeah. Uh, awesome. I, well, I, I think you're, um, oh, you go ahead, Ben. I'm sorry. I am curious. Like did, after the film came out, and you had the release that you had, were you approached by uh, big Hollywood producers who said, let's make, like a la Blair Witch Project, let's make the tunnel to the search for Tangles, where like Tangles family hires a bunch of mercenaries to go into the tunnels with machine guns to try and track him down and, and wipe out, and, you know, and then, because that would be, a, I'd love to see that film. I mean, look, there is a script for a sequel, and I, I won't lie, that was that was a concept that was discussed at one point. <laughs> it's, it's pretty obvious territory to go down. Um, to answer your question, I think this is one of the reasons that I, I, I wanted to tell the story that we didn't get to tell at the time. Um, you know, we've never really been able to make a sequel work up until now and i think it has to do in part with the way the original film was distributed um and the stigma that came with that um especially at the time in, in 2011 you know the, the whole online thing is a very very different situation now and i think with streamers being what they are now etc cetera, etc cetera, i think it would have been received very differently um it's so it's so funny that you say that because i would have thought it was a stroke of genius like releasing it on BitTorrent because you've you funded the film. You didn't have any backers that you had to pay back or anything like that. Like you funded your film completely. Yeah. And then you've released it to the people en masse using BitTorrent, a platform that hadn't been used and has been used, I believe, since um, that way. But it like, it, you know, legally made it, made it available legally through a BitTorrent service. Yeah, it's just uh, it's the ultimate marketing gimmick. Like you got, you know, more eyeballs on it than you ever would have going through a traditional yeah. release. One hundred percent. I think we did the math on it about a, a year or so into um, post release that if we kind of averaged out, uh, I can't remember the number now that it was, um, the number of views and like a. Uh, a, a median box office kind of cinema ticket that it would be the same as like something like a 50 odd million dollar box office or something like that. Right. Conservatively. So that's a, it, the, I, I find that number useful just because people understand it in terms of scope and scale. Um, obviously part of the, even the anti-piracy argument of, you know, one download equaling one sale is a false equivalency. So it's not, it's not a hard and fast thing. Um, look, I agree with you. I, I think I, I was surprised at how much resistance we got to stuff, but we did have conversations and, you know, uh, some of this is in the documentary where uh, we, we had a, at least one sales agent offered us a, a, a significantly sized check uh, to take the movie or at least offered to be able to get us a significant meaningful number of sales, uh, volume of sales, but we had to pull the free release. Um, right. And for a bunch of, you know, starving, a couple of starving filmmakers who have just spent and, you know, sweat and bled everything that they've got to get to that point, it's a really hard conversation to have to sort of, sort of go money uh, following through versus following through on your promise. So, um, and, and I think to speak to your, your, your confusion about why we didn't get more traction in a traditional sense, uh, it's quite simple. You know, the optics around being associated with BitTorrent, it's just, it's a killer, mm -hmm. right? That ended up being a killer. So, yeah, uh, short story. <laughs> I mean, have, you found that, have, you, have you found oh, sorry, that the... Um, <laughs> you go ahead. Sorry, ben, See, this is, this is why we never have you on it, Ben. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm not allowed to, why I'm not allowed to do it. I'm just gonna, I was just wanted to say that for me, it just feels like the most effective marketing plan that I've ever heard of. Yeah, and it was. It was just that the it was a few years too early, I think. I think if we'd done it in a streaming era, it would have been a very different result. Yeah. 
has the opportunity to sort of, you know, have another crack at getting the film out being presented to you? Um, I think it's difficult because most people are still quite traditionally minded, right? Right now it's still available. Obviously when something's up on BitTorrent, you cannot take that down. Um, if you go to, you know, our little portal at Deadhouse TV, it's, you can click play and stream it to your heart's delight. There's no, 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 uh, no pay wall there. But I think that, you know, there's still a lot of people even in, in 2021 that have a, an older way of thinking and the logic being that, if it's available to people for free, then we're not going to give you money for us to give it to our people, even as a streaming service. And I'm like, look, I, you kind of can't argue too hard with that. Um, but my, my my retort to that is what it was at the time and what, what all of our responses were at the time, which is just because it's available, say, on BitTorrent, like it's a really obscure, challenging, I don't know if you've ever used it. It's not. It's not like opening up a web page and clicking play it's just not that simple mm -hmm. so that barrier is enough uh in theory to go well people that would be watching films traditionally but maybe aren't that technically savvy maybe it's different now but 10 years ago certainly it was a solid argument to go there's still people that will download it off itunes or whatever so you know th there's no real meaningful opportunity to get it out at this point but i think that between the 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 whatever the documentary ends up doing um may open up that opportunity it may open up a conversation around a sequel or you know it may end up just being a really nice bit of closure for me having gone down this this project and through memory lane and and uh and, and be done with it so who knows yeah well i look i'm one of those people that that did purchase the dvd and the blu-ray and i do recall like as you mentioned that the the, the blu-ray at least had quite a bit of additional documentary footage in there. So what can fans of the film, because it has got a cult following, what can they expect from the documentary? Like, does it go into the stuff you're talking about now? It does, yeah. Look, um, you know, we we spoke to uh, a few people that we didn't have a chance to include in the original documentary because obviously to include it on the release, that was all done post the film's actual release, right? So. Mm. There are some um, some stories about uh, that we're able to go into now about just how uh, much resistance we got um, even post release um, and even in the week leading up to you know we had a whole bunch of uh, uh, really promising signs and pre orders for retailers and all of that sort of stuff and it all just kind of exploded at the eleventh hour in, in a really really awful way so. Um, you know, there's, there's stuff like that that we were never able to talk about at the time um, that without throwing people under the bus even now, we're able to discuss with a little bit more of a level head all around. You know? <laughs> so, um, so there's that. But I think that equally of interest for or possibly even more uh, of more interest for um, for fans of the film is that, you know, we really went back to a lot of that behind the scenes footage, which Yes, some of it you will have seen before, but there's a lot of really fun, cool, silly moments um, from production that really, uh, really illustrate. And I, even I look back at it now and just go, yeah, that was insane. Just really illustrate how uh, scrappy it was and how passionate everybody that was there was. And it's just one of those magic moments where the recipe of all those people together um you know it's just it's really it's, it's lightning in a bottle as jules used to like to say uh, that's that's probably the best way i can sum it up so hopefully it, it's not you know it's not too dry with all of that other stuff in there but i think overall it pretty much it's it, every other story that um, I, i've been able or asked to tell about the funding or the production or the release of of it sort of all wrapped up into one neat hour and a half package with voices from pretty much everybody, just about everybody that was involved. So, yeah, right. And um, uh, the clock is catching up to us. So, I just want to quickly ask before we run. Um, and uh, Adrian Nugent, the director, it's it's mm -hmm. his debut film, I believe. How did he get involved? So, Adrian actually was someone who, um, back in the distracted media days, uh, was one of the first people that uh, Jules and I had on payroll. So, I've known him for a while. He came in just post tunnel. And, um, you know, he, he, he's done some behind the scenes work for us on our other projects. Like he did our behind the scenes clips on um, for Deadhouse Dark, our shutter show that came out this year. 
And, you know, it just, I don't know, it just kind of added up and, and made sense uh, to, to reach out to Adrian to, to get him on board. So, um, you know, and, and he's, done a, he's done a great job. And, and like I said, for me, I really needed to maintain some distance so it didn't just feel like an ego fluff project. That's not what I wanted it to be. Um, and, uh, and, and that distance with, with Adrian kind of driving it has, 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 I've been able to do that and he's done a great job of, of bringing out the stories that I think are worth telling, so... Awesome. Well, you know what? It's been bloody great chatting with you, mate. And the tunnel and the documentary, The Other Side of Darkness, they're both playing at Monster Fest on December the 5th. Uh, I believe, are you going to be there? Oh, I will be there, yeah. yeah. Unless something happens COVID-related and everything implodes again, I will absolutely be there. <laughs> and and Adrian will be there as well at the, at the documentary screening, so... Awesome. Well, I'll be there to bump elbows with you. And um, I'm really looking forward to the documentary. I haven't seen it yet. And um, everyone should get along. Tickets are on sale at the Monster Fest website. Um, and I, yeah, I encourage it. So thanks so much for your time, mate. Not at all, man. Pleasure. It, uh, it feels way too short. It would have been great to talk for longer. Thanks for having me on. Maybe we can revisit. Done. Deal. <laughs>